Hey, welcome back to the Hub Channel. This week, my name is Brandon, and I am joined again by Jeff Beamer, and we have a great show for you today. As you guys know, Jeff here has been crushing it. Jeff, I know we're going to be going over the GM trade again today, how well you did on that trade, as well as one more trade. And I kind of just want to let everybody know here, you can download this guide right here. This is Jeff's guide on how to trade straddles and everything else in the market. Some of the trades that he's been going over this last couple of weeks. If you haven't had a chance already, go ahead and use the link here on the screen. Download this guide. It's absolutely free. And this teaches you everything that you need to know about what Jeff is talking about. Now, Jeff, these past couple of trades have been so good. Tell us a little bit about that. What brought you into that? And tell us what's going on in the market this week. I know a lot is going on in the market. The government shut down, came back. They kicked the can down the road. So much is happening. So obviously, I'm feeling my thunder there, man. Crazy I'm feeling my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, Jeff, you know what's going on. So explain to us what's going on because they've been kicking this thing down the road. And I guess they're back open for business. Whatever. Well, it know, is what it is. Even what though does that we mean? have some, we, even though we have some headline. Uh, the headlines that can move the market. We've actually been trading things that kind of maybe be going sideways or quiet. Now that guide you just talked about is something that I do around earnings announcements. In fact, I sent an alert out today on our breakout Delta neutral breakout trading service about an earnings event happening this week. But even at the same time, we can also trade things that are quiet. So if we bring that GM trade up, remember two weeks ago during this show, we focused on the automakers. And the main reason was the strike and the impact that that could have, of course, on these automakers. And I kind of suggested that GM specifically would just trade sideways in a range. So what I did was I put what's called a calendar spread out on General Motors. And what you're seeing here is how the trade ended up on expiration last Friday. Just this past Friday, the last trading day of September is when our short leg on this trade closed. And look at that. It closed right at our strike price for a 200% return on risk in just 10 days. Okay, 10 trading days plus a weekend, so 12 days in all, a 200% return on a stock where we anticipated would go nowhere. All right, now that is a real skill. All right, and then the other trade that we talked about last week was Philip Morris. Okay, Philip Morris came up on a quiet list, and so we did a similar trade. I called a calendar spread. And you can see here that in one week, this trade is currently up around 34%, 34% in just a week. Now, we're not ready to close this out because, well, number one, we're in the profit zone and we still have more money that we can make. And number two, the stock, I think, could trade down slightly and possibly make us even more money. So we'll watch that one and update everybody on this trade next week as we go through the cycle of all these trades. In fact, I'll show you how we did on our breakout trade as well. But let's jump in and kind of talk about the headlines a little bit. We have, you know, I kind of buried the lead a little bit. And, and so Brandon touched on it for me. And that is, you know, kicking the can down the road. The fact that, you know, we did avert a government shutdown, it's delayed for 45 days. All right, kick the can down the road, let's focus on something else. So for me, that meant what is happening in the market this week? And what's happening in the market this week is probably still focused around what the Fed is saying. And the Fed seems to be, well, let's say their crystal ball is a little cloudy right now. And I get all these comments coming through my news feed on what the Fed is saying, which is probably contributing to the market downturn that we're seeing. All right, so our first headline is essentially, you know, Chairman, uh, one of the Fed governors, Fed, uh, Chairman um, says uh, she is um, encouraging higher rates, okay? Uh, 
and that's Governor Bowman. Okay, she wants higher rates. And then Fe uh, Fed Chairman Williams suggests that the higher rates may be already finished. And then you have uh, about two weeks ago, you had Collins coming out and saying rates need to stay up and for longer. Okay, so there's all of this kind of in all these encouraging words that, hey, we may not only be staying higher for longer, but we might even be going higher for longer. And I think that's what's pushing the markets down right now. If we look at the um, yield curve that the Federal Reserve looks at, that's the 10 year versus the three month yield curve that is still inverted and it's flattening. Now, when you get a flattening effect on the yield curve, this is because right now, while we're inverted, that the 10 year is screaming higher, okay? It's not just moving higher, it's screaming higher, okay? And it's collapsing this inverted yield curve. But what happens is the federal government looks at this to anticipate the possibility of a recession from six to 18 months out. So if you look closely at this chart, you will see that it was really the end of October, maybe November when we inverted. So you could even count that as obviously the fourth quarter as quarter one. And now we're moving into the fourth quarter of 2023. So that would be five quarters. We're, we're not even to near the end of that runway yet for a recession. And I think the markets are trying, are starting to really feel that. And that's why some of the action that we've gotten. One more chart that we're going to look at uh, that does affect um, really the housing industry. And we focused on the real estate sector before several weeks ago is the 30 year bonds. And those rates are at another high. Last week, they were just at seven and a quarter percent, seven to seven and a quarter percent. And this week they jumped, jumped almost 25 basis points to seven and a half, touching seven and a half basis points on um, the 30 year fixed mortgage rates. Now that's a national average. Okay. On some rates, you're going to get around seven and a quarter. You might get seven and an eight through other vendors. But the fact is we're above 7% and that can be a, a really affect new home sales, which we saw last week in some reports, new home starts and, um, and second homes as far as, um, the secondary market for people that are currently in a low mortgage rate of say 3%, if they sell their home, they're faced with a higher interest rate when they buy another home. And that has really slowed the secondary market for homes that are um, offered for sale. So we're seeing that across the board. And again, that could kind of play into what's happening with the broader markets itself. So, um, you know, when is the, you know, where, where are we in this cycle with all this interest rate information and, and what's happening in the broader markets? Uh, let's take a look at, at what the conference board is saying. Uh, the conference board puts out a, a, not only a lagging economic indicator, but a leading economic indicator. And their leading economic indicator is showing that we have entered into um, a, a recession. OK, that red dash that you see that we uh, dropped below. Now, I showed a similar chart last week that was ended in February, right when we were touching zero on this chart. Well, this is an updated chart, OK, down through August and early September of 2023. And you can see that we have crossed not only below zero, but that negative four, which is a indication of a start of a recession. So you can see that we're trading below that. And, you know, again, leads to pressure in the markets. So Brandon, let's, let's jump ahead and, yeah, and this is interesting. Uh, 
the broader markets. What you're bringing up here, Jeff, all these charts that you're showing here, I mean, it paints the picture really well as to what is happening in the market, and it kind of tells this story. And all I'm seeing is you're really saying, along with all these other guys in these charts, you think a recession is imminent pretty much, right, Jeff? Right. Now, the market is very forward-looking. Right. It's always looking forward about yeah. six months. So we get this pullback now. Once the recession kind of is official, whatever the new definition, the, I mean, it's been official for traders, but whatever the you know, government, new, new uh, government um, definition of a recession is, uh, comes out, well, then market actually, it, it could open up the possibility for the market to actually rally. Okay, so market's looking forward right now. If we take a look at my chart here on my screen, I have a chart up of the Spider Index Trust, SPY. And you'll notice here that it has moved down well off its highs in what we call this ABC pattern. Now, this ABC pattern um, is very easy to see. In fact, I'll just you know draw a simple... Oh, let me grab my little pen here and just draw a little line. Well, it doesn't want to cooperate at the moment, but essentially, if you follow my mouse, we have the A pattern here. We have the B pattern back up and then a C pattern all the way down to my long term moving average. That long term moving average is the 161 period moving average. That is huge support for the S&P 500 now, right now. Now, here's the thing. From a trader's pers perspective, this could be an easy trade. We find support here and we move higher, okay? Or if I did a trade like that, if I did trade, uh, put on a bullish trade on the Spider Index Trust, I would be very quick to exit if we dropped below and broke on a closing basis, broke below that long-term moving average. Because when if we broke below this long-term moving average, our next level of support isn't until about 410. Okay? A drop from 427 to 410 is is it, it it'll grab your attention, okay? Considering that we're well off the highs um that we are right now. Now, interestingly enough, the NASDAQ actually had a decent day today. It was up 85 basis points, showing some green uh, today. It's holding at support. And this is kind of the same thing here. Since it's at support, we could see that um, the stock could move higher and retest these highs. But if it doesn't, quickly take off it. Any bullish trade, because yes, we're going to drop, I would guesstimate initially to my long-term moving average, the 161 period, which is at 342 right now. Okay, we're trading at 361. It could drop to 342. Okay, I would take that bullish trade off pretty quickly if we broke the most recent lows. Okay, let me zoom in here. These most recent lows. I would quickly exit that bullish trade. Now, the one indicator that is, excuse me, the one index that has not been doing well are the small caps. The trade for a long time was buy NASDAQ, sell small caps, okay? B buy the Qs, sell IWM. So if we jump over to IWM, you can see today, boy, we're... Thank goodness we closed off the lows. It could have been really ugly. IWM is pushing down. And I actually have a cross of my short-term moving average, which is a 21-period moving average. It has crossed my long-term moving average, meaning that's pretty darn bearish. We could see if support here fails, we could see a drop down to about 165 on IWM, and that is, uh, we're trading at 173 right now. All right. Jeff, now, that's exactly what, that's exactly the point Rob talked about when he was on the Hub channel here last week. That really? 165 level, if we break this 170, 174, where kind of where we're sitting right now, 
it's kind of those watch out below sessions where it can keep on going. And it's worrisome more so that it's the small caps because these are the small businesses. These are the places that are going to run out of money first, obviously, before corporate, bigger, bigger companies, big S&P companies and things like that. And so this paints a better picture of the economy for the for the little guy, I think. And a lot of what's happening right here is mimicked over in in crypto today. So this is kind of the same thing that we're seeing in crypto, this huge rundown with a slight right. bounce off the lows. Right. But interesting. Right. I think if you're looking for a bullish trade, it's probably something within the queues. A, a, a stock like Meta, uh, possibly, or uh, Google, um, something definitely that's tied to AI. So if you are looking for uh, some green or a bullish trade, that's where I would look. Everything else, boy, a lot of stocks within the S&P 500, a lot of stocks in the Russell 2000 have just been falling apart. And some of them look like a falling knife. And we don't want to stand below a falling knife. <laughs> Trust me. No. Uh, it's, it's, Nobody wants to catch a falling knife, Jeff. Obviously. That's right. That's, so that's right. what do we have to look forward to? I mean, what do you got that you have on the outlook coming up this next week? I know we have earnings coming up, some other things. What are we looking at? That's right. Well, I've got two things for you here on the outlook. Let's go a little further out. Couple, We're a couple of weeks away from a very busy earnings season. In fact, we do have earnings starting this week. I mean, we have earnings on a regular basis. Every, you know, Almost every week, some company is declaring earnings. But most of them get clustered in the core of about six to eight weeks. And this week, we tick up a little bit on the number of earnings that we're having, okay? The heat of the earnings season is still about two to three weeks away, but just today in our service, as I mentioned earlier, I gave uh, something that I was watching, uh, uh, an alert on a stock I was watching that has earnings this week. And you can see here that we have kind of big companies here. We have, you know, McKesson um, tomorrow before market opens and then Wednesday, we have um, Helen of Troy, and after uh, that's before market open. Um, and then a couple of real no well-known names on Thursday, including ConAgra, Levi's, and Constellation Brands. So within that group that I just mentioned is our featured trade um, for our subscribers and the reason why I chose that particular company. Now, really, on the on the uh, announcements um, list this week, we have U.S. unemployment, which comes out Friday at 8.30 Eastern time. That comes out Friday morning nice and early, but that's really it. So earnings are starting to uh, ramp up, and um, and we, we do have one economic report coming out this week. But the sector that I really want to focus on is, well, kind of more in the near term. And that is the small caps, all right? IWM, and I wanna focus on IWM here for just a moment. You can see in the image that I've expanded it out a little bit and get shown a little bit more of the time here. And those lows that are back in 2022 at 165, that is where you know, we're kind of thinking that the Russell could drop to if it gives up support right here. And so what I'm going to do is actually using delta neutral strategies as I'm going to put a trade on down around that area. Now, as a trader, you could do a vertical spread like a bear call spread or a bull put spread. Those are limited risk, limited reward strategies. But some of the delta neutral strategies that I employ can get, a, they are also limited risk, but they offer a lot more reward. And that's why I like doing them. Things like maybe an out of the money calendar spread or an out of the money butterfly, targeting that 165 level. So that is where I'm focused this week is really on the 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 Russell and the fact that this is really weak and earlier today when it was trading at its lows, it looked like it could really get out of hand. So uh, as the as the image shows, 
I think we could probably get a bounce. We might trade a little lower here a couple of days this week and then rally back up a little bit before getting into the middle of October when earnings start coming out. This could push the IWM much lower. So that's it. Really nice. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice Honestly, <laughs> that, looking at that trade, I love that trade. I mean, just looking at the chart, it it just makes sense. I mean, that's the most obvious trade that I've seen out there. And I was actually going to ask you about that a little bit later. If we could put on a trade that would be able to benefit from that dropping or in mm -hmm. case we do get a bump, who knows what the heck happens. But that is a perfect trade. I like the way you set that up. That looks good. Um, anything else that you want to talk about before we bounce out of here? Well, just, you know, it's always good to kind of keep an eye out in the market. Let the charts talk to you. Let, let them tell you which way a particular stock is going to move. And right now, a lot of the indexes are pointed down. NASDAQ's holding on firm, okay? But everything else is looking pretty weak. Earnings is going to be very exciting as we get into the core of, uh, of the month. October is going to be hot and wild. Stick to our channel and watch as, as we go through this earnings cycle here the next few weeks because it, it'll, be, it'll get nuts. I, I have a feeling. So that's it. Well, Jeff. Thank you so much again for dropping back on the channel with us. You have been on fire with all your trades. And like we talked about earlier, if you have not downloaded that guide, now's your chance to go ahead and go to the link. I will put the link in the description of this video as well so you can check this guide out. But Jeff, thank you so much again for dropping by the channel today. And thank you guys for coming here. Be sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one.